Hi, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk to you about an age-old problem that many of us have to deal with in this lifetime. And as long as there's people on the planet, um, we're going to be faced with this issue. And that is dealing with selfish and manipulative people. And it wouldn't be such a problem if they had some realization of how selfish and manipulative they really were, but oftentimes they don't. So then the responsibility falls on us to make sure that we're doing what we need to do to take care of ourselves and set the appropriate boundaries so we're not completely mowed over in these relationships. I speak from experience. Uh, at one time in my life, you know, I have to say I was really being played like a fiddle um, by a few folks because I, I didn't know what I was dealing with. I wasn't really listening um, to my instincts, but I changed that. I turned it around. I flipped the script and my life is by far 100% better because of it. So today I want to um, share some information with you, uh, help you to do the exact same things. There's two uh, key issues I want to talk about today. One is what, what does a selfish or manipulative person look like and how do they make you feel? The other is what in the world can you do about it? How can, what can you do to reclaim your power? So number one, uh, what does a selfish and manipulative person look like? First of all, if you've dealt with these folks, you know that they have the uncanny ability to always make it about them. It could be your wedding, it could be uh, your birthday, or maybe you just want to have a conversation to get your needs met for once, and somehow they flip the script. Um, you know, you're wrong, you shouldn't be doing this, etc., etc. So uh, that's a tall tale sign you're dealing with a, a manipulative or selfish person because they put themselves front and center in almost all situations. Uh, number two, their charm makes you feel as though you're not really on the right track or you, you, you second guess yourself, you dismiss that gut instinct. Example of this would be uh, the friend or family member who's quite charming and nice to you often, maybe um, showers you with nice gifts, lots of attention, but guess what? The, the minute that you disagree with him or her or you disappoint them, or upset them, they put you in the deep freezer. They stop talking to you. They give you the silent treatment for two or three weeks as a form of manipulation to get you back under their control. So there is that um, charm and that other aspect of them that causes you to really second guess yourself. Oh, you know, this is a really good person in their heart. And they may re really be a good person, but they also have that selfish, manipulative spin to the personality. And uh, the third thing I want you to think about in terms of asking yourself the question, am I dealing with a selfish or manipulative person in my life, is they, they typically will turn it around and everything is your fault or most things are your fault, even if it's clear cut to your neighbors other friends and other family members, they flip it around and they may tap into whatever insecurities you have and they make you feel like it's your fault and then induce that lingering um, feelings of guilt or remorse. I'm going to talk to you in a little bit about what guilt is, remorse, and how to deal with that and take that completely out of the equation. So it, it's the million dollar question. Why why do they continue to do this when it makes many people around them feel confused, bad, or what have you? They do it um, for the same reasons that you get up and go to work, <laughs> that you enjoy your weekends, that you take care of your family. They do it because it works. They do it because on some level, unconscious or consciously, there is a benefit for them. And that's important to remember that if if they didn't surround themselves with people who would um, play along and play on this stage with them, their behavior would stop. I mean, think about it. Last time you went to go see a basketball game, if 
uh, there wasn't uh, 10 players on the court and everyone you know, playing their role. Could you watch such an exciting game? You could not, it's impossible. So um, selfish folks and manipulators do rely on their cast of characters to continue engaging this behavior. So next question to ask yourself, are you allowing someone to pull you on stage into their drama, into a drama you really don't want to be a part of? So what can you do to not take power away from anyone else? Because people who are happy, good self-esteem, balanced, don't need to do that. Uh, the issue is um, taking your power back uh, from someone else, from a selfish or manipulative person want to share with you about five strategies. Uh, number one, and this is so very important, you can be upset with this selfish, manipulative person until you're blue in the face. But until you take personal responsibility for your role in the exchange, you're going to be burning a lot of energy on resentment. You know, fact of the matter is, when we know better, we do better. So you're at a stage in your life where you know better and now you're going to take the necessary steps and realizing that they are like, very unlikely to change. It's really up to you to put in those boundaries, to decide what level of engagement you want with this person and take the emphasis off trying to change them because you again then you turn into the manipulator you're trying to manipulate them to be something that they're not so keep the responsibility on you um, number two is getting a handle on your own personal guilt and remorse because remember guilt and remorse is a major uh, tool that um, selfish folks and manipulators will use to keep you under control let me explain um, what guilt is as I understand it guilt is a um, sign or you know this tugging on your sleeve that there's something uh, I need to circle back and do. There is something that's unresolved. Perhaps I was wrong in this area. I need to make reparations or corrections. Now, you've all heard that old parable about the snake bite. It's not the one snake bite that kills us. It's reliving the bite over and over again. Let me say this. If you have made a mistake at some point in your life, if you have knowingly or unknowingly offended someone, if you've taken a detour in life where you hurt other people, misguided, miscalculated, whatever the case may be, suffering the consequences of, of those actions, of those thought patterns is enough. Suffering once is enough. If you have said your apology, uh, you are sorry, uh, heartfelt, you have attempted to make your reparations, and someone is still trying to hold you hostage, then that becomes their issue, their energy, and their problem. You are then to take your hands off of it and let it go. Again, suffering uh, the consequences of an action is enough. So we don't have to walk around and allow anyone to beat us over the heads for the rest of our lives because of um, guilt or, or remorse or shame. So free yourself from that and it's very liberating. You know, you'll be able to look them in the face and say, you know what, look, I have suffered more than for this. It's time to move on. Uh, uh, three, if you're not comfortable saying no, at least become comfortable with <laughs> delaying no. So that means when someone asks you to do something, because remember, if we're dealing with someone who's selfish and manipulative, they have an entitlement mentality. So they obviously um, automatically expect you to say yes. And maybe because you've been on this, playing on this court, this stage with them for so long, you are inclined to say yes, but how about this? Give me some time to think about that. It may take you a week or two to think about it, 
Uh, maybe you want to do it once you've flushed it through, and maybe you don't. And if you don't, a simple no will suffice. Here's another trip. Anytime you tell someone no and they become angry or uh, resentful and try to finagle you into doing it, that is another tall tale sign of someone who's trying to manipulate or control you. Uh, next point is please brace yourself for a few blowouts. What do I mean by that? Think about it. If you had free access to a candy store, you could walk in anytime, get the chocolates, uh, mop balls, licorice, whatever the case may be. Uh, you can get what you want anytime you want it. And someone closed the door, the front door to a candy store, you'd be upset too. That's where we get the phrase taking candy from a baby. So you have to understand that the folks who are into this control and manipulation are used to getting what they want. That's how they operate and they've come to expect it. So when you flip the script and you draw your definitive line, you rest assured there is going to be some pushback. And let's keep it real. You may even lose a few folks. What's my advice about that? Open the door for them, help them with their shoes, let them walk. Don't run after them, don't chase them, I'll tell you why. Because you don't need anyone in your life whose sole intent and purpose is to keep you under control and to keep you under their thumb. So again, it's, it's not always easy, but I'll tell you what, for every uh, negative, you know, every individual who you know, may float down the sea, and this is a money back guarantee, there will be other good folks that come in, healthy relationships that you can build, and those healthy relationships that you deserve. And lastly, is to uh, trust your gut. Trust your gut and have faith in what you're feeling and what you're sensing. That uneasiness and that tension is your sixth sense tugging at you and saying something is wrong here. Something just does not set right. And so often we just ignore those feelings. You have always known in your heart if you're being manipulated. You have always known if you're dealing with a selfish person and being taken for granted. But so often we just let those voices go um, in the back of our mind and let the behavior continue. But let's make today a new day. Let's make it a new start, a firm, a firm commitment to realize that every day, in every way, from the time we wake up, as we move through our work day, as we move through our time at home, to the time we go to sleep, we are teaching people always and constantly how to treat us. And trust me on this, they are taking notes. So I hope these strategies and what I've said what works for you. It has made a difference for me and my life, and I'll see you next time.